This is Pocket, Episode 5, Gangster Millennial, on Sunday, June 28th, 2015, and now, Jill Something My iPod Touch. This episode of Pocket is hosted by Brandon Johnson, Brian Mitchell, and Ryan Rampersad. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash pk5. Hey, welcome to Pocket, Episode 5. Five That's already, us. huh? We've been doing it for five weeks. How did that happen? I don't know. How well, did think, that happen? I think it's been six weeks, but five episodes. Close enough. That's true. That's true. Time zones. Well, so I've I've uh, changed my weeks to evolve around this podcast. So oh, that's that's great. so nice of you. Well, you know, like this, uh, it's it's you know, a, a week might be over for other people, but my week's not. Uh, you know, it's 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 not a full week unless uh, unless I get to chat with you guys. That's so, so good. <laughs> Well, I'm glad we can finish your week for you. Well, maybe either this way. is beginning his week. That's true. I, either which, I, yeah. Oh, that was close. It could be, close. It could be, it could be I, either the best way to start my week, or the only way I know a week is over. I don't know which is better. <laughs> well, either way, it's happening, and that's probably a good thing. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we got some stuff going on this week. Yeah. Some stuff has gone on. Some stuff will go on. Some fun stuff particular i think we've got something from ryan that has to do with cell phone service eh yeah you know we like talking about phones here we do pretty much every show i'm on uh yeah talks about phones actually so um my mom has uh virgin mobile which is a uh, mvno of sprint right now and her Mm -hmm. service is pretty let's just say not good and uh so uh we're thinking about switching her over to straight talk now, if you haven't heard of Straight Talk, I think we talked about it a few episodes ago. Yeah. But it's the, um, it's kind of like a, it's, a tr- it's track phone owned, but it's not just track phone. It's, it's an MVNO of not just one carrier, but four carriers. So that's pretty cool. Still mind blowing that they can do that. I, I know. It is pretty cool. Now, it, it's not as cool as I originally thought it was. It's not like it's literally switching service in real time, depending on who's the strongest or who's the best or whatever. You do have to pick a service, an MVNO carrier, when you stri- oh. sign up to Straight Talk. But hmm. uh, So I can walk you through that. Basically, yeah. you walk into your local Walmart, which is a pretty terrible experience because, you know, it's a Walmart. <laughs> um, but once you get out of Walmart, you open the box that you just paid $60 for, and I'll tell you why it costs $60, and you find five SIM cards. Jeez. You've got to be kidding me. I'm not. Uh, so one of the SIM cards is for, okay, so, okay, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me back up a bit. It's actually six SIM cards because there's two of each type. So there's micro and nano of each type. Oh my gosh. That makes more sense. And, and so there's, there's, uh, there's, there's a SIM card for Verizon and AT&T and T-Mobile. And Mm -hmm. I think there's also... Like a, a separate non SIM card, but you might as well just call it one because it's a code to activate yeah. on Sprint. <laughs> so you're paying, and then inside included with that 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 package is also a, a service code which gets you one month, you know, for free built into that price. So for sixty dollars, you can just get a SIM card, and by a SIM card, I mean six SIM cards and a, a month of free service. And oh service gosh. is normally, you know, fifty or forty-five dollars anyway. So I guess you're you're you you get a lot of options and you're covered. Yeah. Okay. So, so after you pick your SIM card, you have to pick. Uh, you know, do you want AT and T? Do you want T Mobile? Do you want Verizon? And so we picked AT and T. And so that's pretty cool. Um, you you just take your card number, you type it into the website, you take the service number, you type that into the website, and suddenly your phone works and it gets service. Nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and then because it's not a normal carrier, I guess, um, Android doesn't have preloaded, um, APN settings. I don't know what an APN stands for. Um, either so, uh, let me look it up. It's some carrier thing. Yeah. I know yeah. I used to thing on iOS that would set some APN settings for right. proxying bandwidth so you wouldn't use as much. Mm-hmm. That's right. I I've heard words about it, but I do not know what those words mean. Yeah, I don't I don't really know what it is, but apparently since it's not a standard carrier in the US, Android doesn't have them preloaded, so you either have to set them manually or you can download from the Android store thing uh an app that will set them for you. So I just did it manually cuz it was easy. 
Yeah. Uh, and then once you do that, you get LTE, and that's that's the end of the story. Cool. That's so amazing. Is APN is access point okay. name. Oh, yeah. yeah An access point name, APN, is the name of a gateway between a GPRS, 3G, or 4G mobile network and on another computer network, frequently the public internet. Hey, well, there you go. That's That makes a lot of sense. Nice. So, so, yeah. yeah. Why don't they just have, like, DHCP or something? Well, because then... That would be too easy. Yeah, that'd be too easy. <laughs> I, I mean, they, they effectively have it because if they're all pretty static, like they only change every few years, you probably yeah. can make all of the standard ones built into the phone and then just switch dynamically, depending on SIM. No, absolutely. So, like, I, I think I think I might have, in, in retrospect, I think I might have ran into a little bit of this when I was in Europe, right? So I told you how I got that uh, hotspot yep. that um, works in a bunch of countries uh, and just so happened to work in all the countries that I had and I could use it on towards my prepaid balance that I got in the UK. Well, in France, um, it just would not work mm-hmm. at all. Yep. Like, and, and I was like, what, what, what's going on? Um, and there's a way that I had to kind of go in through the back and I think... In retrospect, I did have to end up changing those APN settings yep. so that it would just find somebody else to to roam off of while, while we were in France. And it ended up picking between like Orange and O2 or, or something like that. And um, now that I think about it, that was absolutely the APN settings, which makes a bunch of sense now that I'm reading, kind of scanning this Wikipedia article and talking to you guys about it. Huh. Yeah. Did that cost extra because you were rowing or did, are they, did they have agreements so it's just fine? They have agreements. It's just um, in, I think the carrier itself, three, actually operated in the UK and in Italy. It doesn't operate in France. Right. I think I think that's what was what was tripping it up because it was like, well, you know, I I could try to use your minutes on this, but I can't, or you know, your your data allowance on this, but I can't really because I don't know anybody out here. You know, it, it couldn't call home. I think that's how, probably how sad. Yeah, I know. Just had to just had to show it the addresses of some friends, and then it all worked out. So <laughs> what what we're doing now is where I well I have the um, SIM card from Straight Talk on AT and T. Mm-hmm. I have that in my old Nexus Five, which of course is running the Android M Preview, which means mm-hmm. pretty much every like every ten minutes, if I'm using an app, it just crashes. But you nice. know that's okay, it's fine. I'm I'll, I'm, I'll live. Uh, but basically, we're going around town, you know, just on our daily errands and stuff. Uh, checking to see what the signal strength is like compared to her to to my mom's current Virgin Mobile phone, and let me tell uh-huh. you, Virgin Mobile, huh, they don't get any service. I don't know how people still pay for that service. I don't understand. But they pick it back off of Verizon, right? Uh, Virgin or- Mobile is a Sprint. Sprint, right? Yeah, yeah, they're a Sprint, and so like in the same parking lot, I I held both phones, you know, like up, and I checked what their signal strength was. The Sprint phone, Virgin Mobile phone, it was getting negative 117 dBm, and nice. the Straight Talk was getting negative 93 dBm. That's a big difference. Yeah, totally. and so the closer to zero means better. Yeah. And so, wow, I mean, Straight Talk, man, strength. Yeah, so, so stepping back a little bit, did you literally have to pick between Verizon, Sprint, or Ver- Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT and T yeah. out of the SIM cards, like it literally said, "Yep, this is if you want to use oh. the Verizon network. This is <laughs> if you want to use AT and T." Like that's so weird to me from a branding perspective. Like, oh well. Okay, now, so I, I, yeah. I, I think you can probably see me in my camera here. Others won't be yeah. able to, but uh, if I hold it like this, so we, yeah. oh, there's the camera. Um, <laughs> so uh, you can see that there's four card things in here. Well, there was four. Now there's three, and so. Each one of those is for a carrier. So I've got here dual SIM card. So this is um, for AT&T dual SIM card, uh, standard and micro. And then right below that, I have the AT&T Nano. And then on the other side, I have dual SIM card that's standard and micro for T-Mobile and Nano for T-Mobile. And then in another packet, this packet, I have the um, Verizon options. And oh, then, wow, uh, yeah. and then another piece of paper in my bag somewhere. I have the uh, Sprint options. Oh my gosh! So, That's... and you 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 just pick the card you want. You pop it out of its little you know protector, and you pull, yeah. plug it in. That's such a hilarious user experience. It is really weird. And so you know, there's like a little piece of paper. Decide which one you want, and then proceed to packet two or packet three, depending on which one you want. Hmm. That's so like. 
for for a MVNO that's called Straight Talk. It seems oddly it's uh straight. <laughs> yeah. I mean, options are good, but I mean, it's kind of overwhelming in a way. Yeah. If you so didn't you if you choose? didn't know, you'd be kind of bewildered. Yeah. Yeah, oh definitely. Why did you choose AT&T? I'm just curious. Um, so my mom has, uh, what do you call it, uh, Virgin Mobile right now, and the service is pretty lame, so if she, she goes out of the city f- rather frequently, uh, so she has to do go-lives at clinics and hospitals around Minnesota, and yeah. so she's often on call when she goes to those go-lives, and that, you know, means she needs to receive and receive phone calls and place phone calls a lot, so we picked AT&T because I wanted speed, and I don't like Verizon, and I don't have a Verizon compatible phone anyway. Yeah. Um. So AT and T versus T Mobile. Then, well, T Mobile has a smaller footprint, so I might as well go with AT and T. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be about the same reasoning. I think I would choose to. Yeah. I mean, I guess you might get better speeds in the city with T Mobile because there's less people, and I think they have stronger LTE in the city. But she really doesn't yeah. use her phone for data much. So I don't think it matters in the long run. And furthermore, in my experience with it in the last two days, the AT and T speeds are maybe ten times better than the Virgin Mobile speeds. So it doesn't matter. Wow. Doesn't matter. Uh, she'll be getting a lot better service anyway. That's yeah. awesome. That yeah. is so awesome. So like she was getting like I don't know like three ish down, three megabits down, and on the SIM card from AT and T Straight Talk, I was getting fifteen. But then the up speed was 0.3 on Virgin Ooh. Mobile, and then Ooh. like 8 up on AT&T Straight Talk. Oh, wow. AT&T That's... has, you know, LTE, but their their speeds aren't no, that great. They're not they're that great. They're slightly better than my home internet. But yeah. Not better. But it's still better than Virgin Mobile. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's bad. I was at the uh, Pride Festival today, and mm-hmm. I was sitting in a restaurant, just connecting to Wi-Fi there because it was there. This restaurant was packed. And I, I'm like, hmm, you know, I'm going to do a speed test. My, at, at first, the speed test on that app could not connect to a server, so I tried again. <laughs> it got a ping of 1,300 milliseconds, and then it uh, proceeded to do a download of 0.7 megabit per second, and then I exited the app and ignored the speeds. <laughs> <laughs> totally. LTE seemed to have, uh, I'm on at t seemed to have a performance loss as well today i think just the amount of people yeah that's probably what it was no absolutely absolutely i mean when a place is so packed like that there's bound to be uh some some difficulty like that definitely like uh i i remember when i was younger being like oh i should i should get a you know one of those my fi's or you know whatever verizon calls them the jet packs yep um to yep. to combat that and then um as i got older and in fact once i i, I was meeting with some some uh network admins and they were like you know what the heck are you doing that's ridiculous you're just making life more miserable for everybody <laughs> um because interference and stuff so yeah that's yeah. that's a problem with school internet i think because it's never good enough for everyone so people bring in more and then it's just worse and worse Hey, you know, but when we get 5G in five years, you know, 5G yep. changes its entire architecture. Instead of having, you know, like three towers serve 150 people, we're going to be having thousands of little micro towers serving, you know, thousands of people. Oh, yeah. So that'll, that, be, awesome. that'll be good. Totally. So the uh, plan going forward on Wednesday will be to put the phone SIM card from the Nexus 5 into my mom's new phone, which allegedly will be the Zen Phone 2. And nice. uh, if you haven't really looked at the Zen Phone 2, it's uh, pretty good specs for a pretty decent price, two ninety nine for yeah. Um, unlocked. Yeah, unlocked. Um, it it comes with sixty four gigs of storage with micro SD support. Um, it comes with an Intel processor, incidentally. Uh, <laughs> so not not normal, I would say. Um, it's not x eighty six, is it? No, it it's it's well, I guess it probably is because it that's what Intel does, isn't it? Um, apparently the, it's emulating ARM somehow, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's funky. It, it, it's 64-bit, though. It, like... it, it is, and apparently it's it's fa- as fast as the top-of-the-line Snapdragons these days, so I guess that's hmm. good. We'll see. Um, yeah, I don't see many Asus or Intel smartphones. Yeah, it's an Intel Atom quad-core. Yeah, so that's kind of weird, but at, uh, it's pretty good price, pretty good specs. 
Yeah. Um, I'm looking is forward this one to that trying. Marquis Brownlee reviewed? Um, I'm sure he reviewed it, but I, I don't sure remember. I'm sure he did too, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it is. Well, I'll, I'll let you know on the next podcast. That'd be awesome, yeah. <laughs> Um, of course. so, uh, one of the th- cool things we're, we're doing is even if it doesn't come on Wednesday, um, my mom is going up to, um, Itasca state park or some park near there, um, oh, for yeah. 4th of July. And so I'm going to force her to take the Nexus five or the Zen phone two, uh, which, you know, if it comes in time and I'm going to make her see what the service difference is like for a real carrier and a joke carrier. <laughs> Absolutely. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Nice. I'm, I'm sure Sprint has a couple areas that are better just because. Oh, definitely. Um, but, but it's not here and I don't know where it is. <laughs> yeah. 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 Absolutely. No, that's awesome though. It would be cool to see what, how that turns out. Yeah. Yeah. And this experience, um, it ha- so you, you both use AT&T or no, uh, Brandon uses Verizon, right? Yeah. I'm on yeah. Big Red. Yeah. Okay. And Brian uses, uh, AT&T. Well, yep. I've been on T-Mobile for, since the Nexus 4, so for three years now, maybe four years now. And I, back in the day, it was really easy to get on T-Mobile prepaid with the great $30 plan for, yeah. you know, five gigabytes of data and unlimited texting in 100 minutes because I don't call anyone. Well, yeah, now it's almost impossible to get on that plan because if you walk into an e- uh, a T-Mobile store and ask for that plan, they'll say, nope, can't do it, go away. So oh, this Lordy. is this is a really nice change. You just walk into the store and you can do everything yourself. It's really nice. Yeah. See, I, I think I might do that with the with the hotspot that I got for, in the UK because it's unlocked. Yeah. Um, and after like the twentieth of uh, does that, what does that support like uh, GSM? That's right. It's all GSM. No CDMA. There's yeah. not a CDMA radio in the darn thing. Very nice. So, yeah. I, I think I'm gonna join uh, join T-Mobile if yep. if only because uh, Jean Leger and. Uh, uh, you know, all, all their marketing materials are so millennial friendly. Uh, millennial friendly. I don't know. There's there's some weirdness with their marketing materials. <laughs> oh, totally. It's totally weird, but it's it's entertaining, sort of. I don't know. To, Maybe it's a certain, a certain breed of millennial, like. Oh, totally. Like what gangster millennial? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah. I don't follow yeah. too much, but I see tweets and photos every so often. What? How many uncarrier, like? points are they at now uh we're at on carrier nine and ten is coming up soon okay Jeez. What? oh my gosh it, they, they have like a they're tracking this it's like a thing well so each uncarrier event is a number and so i think 10 is coming oh. up and so the rumor was there's there are these plans for t-mobile and you get four fully unlimited plans for a hundred dollars um but you have to get four uh so that means they're 25 dollars <laughs> each so I guess oh it's, it's kind of like a family plan, but it's pretty good. Yeah. That's a good rate. Um, totally. and, and there was a rumor that they, those plans were going away. And since Uncarrier 10 is scheduled to be in a few weeks, people assumed that those are going away and we're going to get an even better deal. Well, I guess something might have changed or they kept the deal going. They extended it until July, like 15th. So maybe <laughs> it's going to more closely coincide with the actual changeover or something. Ah, uh, that's... T-Mobile is just so entertaining to watch too, like yeah. a, as a company. Like that's like yeah. uh, he was uh, John Laguerre was at the CES. Maybe it was last year. He was at CES, and there yeah. was an after party, and he got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> that's he would totally do that too because yep. he he is he is the the gangster millennial CEO <laughs> if there ever were one. Yeah, pretty much. That's oh, but they haven't even started yet. Just wait another ten years. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, they, I just feel like they're ten years though. Uh, yeah, it's it's tough. As long as Deutsche Telekom doesn't sell them out to somebody. That's what, yeah. I remember hearing. Were they the ones that were going to go to SoftBank or is that uh, Sprint? No, well, so SoftBank is owning Sprint right now in real time. Oh yeah, you're right. Um, and they considered buying T-Mobile, and T-Mobile said, uh, "What are you talking about? We don't even like Sprint." Yeah. 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 Okay, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. I'm I'm not totally hip to the carrier drive but i'm getting there thanks yeah, to you guys yeah uh, i used to be much drivier but the problem is i don't i don't do a, like a weekly tech news show anymore so i'm not even <laughs> in the loop anymore gotcha so sad this, but you do, this, do this, this show, show is, weekly i do this show weekly but it's not the same this show is not tech news it's thoughts about news we've seen and like in tech ideas that we've had <laughs> and our retelling of what we thought is true from six days ago 
You know, I, lo- yeah. I, like, I love that concept. Totally. It's, yeah. it's an awesome concept, and it, and it works. Works for us, eh? Pretty much. Yeah. So, Brian, I heard you uh, have some iOS news. Yeah. So, um, I'll go the, the uh, Apple approved route first. So, on Tuesday, iOS 8.4 is coming out at 8 a.m. Pacific time, 10 a.m. Central. I'll be at work, so I won't get it at release like I have many times. But yeah. Apple Music is coming out there with a much redesigned uh, music app, which I'm very excited about. Mm-hmm. I will be tweeting about it, I am sure, on Tuesday. Um, and I'm excited to try Apple Music, and hopefully it's something I want to want to do and get rid of Spotify. But we'll see what happens. Um, and then also, last week... Oh, geez, it must have been Monday or Tuesday... I think Tuesday, maybe Monday, the iOS 8.1.3 through 8, through 8.3 jailbreak was released by the Taiji group in China. Um, the bugs have been mostly hammered out now, so everything is working, and Jay Freeman, or Sork, has now approved of 8.3 purchases. So I'm in the process of, well, currently I'm updating Windows on my MacBook Pro, so I can get iTunes and everything working to jailbreak my iPhone 5. Nice. Old test one, so we'll see what happens. Probably nothing much new, you know. I get new emoji on there. I don't know what else is new in 8.3, some bug fixes, but... Yeah. So, yeah, that, that'll that happen. And, oh, oh, I, it just booted up again. I get to... Nice. ...type in my password and... Maybe so. How long maybe. does a, a typical like OS update take on the phone? Um, especially, especially a jailbroken one. Well, so um, to get the proper support, so if you are on an iOS device and you do the over-the-air upgrade on Wi-Fi, um, it updates things, but not in a complete way. I think I want the kernel has to be updated, but there's some things that aren't quite touched unless you do a full restore. Mm-hmm. So before. If I'm anticip- if I'm going to be jailbreaking, I do a full restore of the of the device and then I restore from backup mm-hmm. every single time. So, um, like especially in the iOS seven days when iOS seven dot oh dot one through dot six were out, that was a pain to keep updating and restoring. But you know, you download your gig and a half IPSW file. That's yeah. huge. Restore it on. Uh, wait a while. So you know, it takes probably in. After you've downloaded, it takes maybe an hour to do the restore and copy all your apps back and all the settings. And then it takes maybe 20 minutes to do the jailbreak, you know, to the point where it's all set up and you've opened Cydia and stashed all of your system applications to the user partition. <laughs> but yeah. um, otherwise, yeah, it, it's, it takes some time and then you have to go into all your apps and make sure you're signed in and... Um, it depends if you I, I uh, back up all my devices to iTunes and encrypt the backup, so it should hold on to all my passwords and stay logged into applications. Yeah, that doesn't always happen, so it's hit or miss. Um, so it sometimes can take a lot longer, so I have to make sure I can go in. And then also, since I use iTunes Match, I download and manage music through iCloud, and so every time I restore my iPhone, it wipes all of my music, and I have to download it all onto my phone again, or whatever I want. It's really just a few playlists, only a couple of gigabytes, but yeah, yet another nuisance. So, but it's all for, part of the fun. However, I'm not going to touch my iPhone or my iPad until I'm going to update to iPhone or iOS 8.4 and not jailbreak because Apple Music is probably going to be a better thing than a jailbreak to me. We'll see. Yeah, I'm not into the whole jailbreak scene as as much as I used to be. Understood, understood. But that's yeah. awesome, though. It's so it's so cool that you can like keep up with it even now because like i i i think i jailbreaked my ipod jailbreaked jailbroke jailbroken chances are hard (laughs) um i did whatever that thing is i jail 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 something to my uh uh my ipod touch like i don't know a couple years ago and oh my gosh i bricked it like four times it was awesome it was so much fun but like like that's it's weird to say, but that's like that's like half of the half the fun of it for me at least because I'm, uh, I'm I'm kind of weird like that. But it, like it, it when, once you got it working, it was so cool to get those extra customizations that you just can't get any other way. Yeah, and the, the interesting thing is for me over time as I've I've used these tweaks. I follow a ton of jailbreak developers on Twitter, and 
you know, that's probably not quite half, but getting there of all the people I follow on Twitter are through jailbreaking. And that's how I've kind of discovered other Apple people and things. Totally. But, um, <clears throat> so I've seen, you know, things come up in popularity and fall down. And I've, I've been jailbreaking since iOS 4.3. Uh-huh. Or through one, at least. Um, nice. So it's it's changed. I've definitely used it differently. I used to be way more heavy on um, some more extreme themes, mm-hmm. um, more crazy tweaks that do different things. And now I'm, I'm total on lightweight, minimal um, battery usage. I I mean, I install OpenSSH and yeah. then promptly disable it from booting it, from starting at boot, because battery life is horrible when that's going all the time. And oh. so... I found as of late, you know, I have a Wi-Fi scanner. I have uh-huh. a terminal with a bunch of command line utilities and I have uh, flux and that's basically all I use. And that's not quite worth it for me for all the hassle, especially if with 8.4 coming out. So totally see for me, like flux, flux would be huge. Like I, I didn't know about flux when I first, uh, when I actually got a working jailbreak going on my iPod touch, but um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Do, is, do you find flux to be like helpful on, on a mobile device? Um, it's definitely nice when it's, you know, I'm in a dark room or like, um, yeah, on my, on my phone when I'm in laying in bed before I go to sleep, it's kind of nice. It's a little less harsh. Um, is that the one yeah. that does like the orange tint or red tint? Yeah, yeah totally. Yep. Like I, I'm addicted to it. Like people in my family are addicted my to it. It's computers awesome. Computers for years. Totally. Um, so yeah, it's it's a nice little extra thing to have, but I I'm I got used to it not being there pretty quickly when I upgraded 8.3 back when it first came out. Nice. Uh, and so I it's I I will install it again on my iPhone five because I'm not using it as my main phone, so it's totally fine. Totally fine that I just that's it, that's gonna be my device that's always jailbroken, the most recent jailbreakable firmware. But nice, yeah, that's the way to go. That's awesome. You can try anything out and. And boot it up and update things, be like, okay, cool, and shut down again. Gotcha. Yeah, no, totally. So, but you do think Apple Music is going to replace Spotify for you? Um, yeah. Well, I don't. I don't actually use Spotify very much. I every so I I follow some people on there. I have some playlists I'm subscribed to, and I've used it for when I'm making playlists for dances at at school or something. And so I use it for that, and that's about also. It's a little bit of discovery and just finding the music and I can still use Spotify for that, but yeah, I don't use it too much for streaming um, a little bit in the car. Cause it does support offline mode, but not too much. Cause most of the songs that I listen to, I have downloaded. So uh-huh. I'm, I'm hoping Apple music will be better because if it's a song that I don't really want to put the effort into acquiring, I can just stream it. Um, I'm curious if it'll have offline mode because I do drive maybe hour and a half to two hours a day. Yeah. To- to get to and from work total. And so if I'm streaming even half the time, that's a lot of data per month. Totally. So, so you, you mentioned you also use iTunes match. Of course I, I'm not doing the iTunes match thing yet, but I, I would like to <laughs> definitely do. You, have you heard anything about like whether iTunes match is going to be included or an iTunes match like service of putting your ripped music or wherever you got your music, whatever into, into uh, some sort of iCloud E storage thing is is that going to be included in apple music do you think or is that always going to be a different service and i the reason why i don't know this is because i'm a lazy bum and i didn't watch i didn't finish the keynote yet yeah well they didn't they didn't mention itunes match at all um uh-huh. but that's basically what itunes matches minus the fact that you can just download the files from somewhere you have yeah. to have you know, a mac download the file and then drag it out of itunes yeah um, that works really well for me i like it um eddie q did mention that with iOS 9, iTunes Match will go from 25,000 songs to 100,000. Wow. Nice. That's, oh, that's huge. Awesome. Only update on iTunes Match I've seen at all. Uh-huh. But I, I really enjoy it. It's totally worth $25 a year because it, yeah. it can be a quality converter um, if it detects the songs. And it's super easy to just sync between, you know, as soon as I got more than one computer that I use regularly and several devices, it's way easier to just on the fly, download it rather than have to bring out cables. Only, you know, go back to one computer to manage everything. It, yet, then try and duplicate that library on another computer. I really don't know what I would do with that iTunes batch. Totally, yeah. That's see, that's that's the sort of thing I'm trying to avoid because a couple of years ago, I lost a bunch of songs that I had when I in a in a in a um, 
in a silly backup drive accident. Oh, right. yeah. I probably told you guys about that before. And uh, and I want to not do that again. Probably <laughs> so, a good so idea. Like, something like iTunes Match would a take a lot of the 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 guesswork out of that. And you know, same with the photos. I don't want to turn this into uh into a uh, um, connected style uh, uh, or what do they used to call connected the the Mike Hurley show with with uh, Federico and, and the gang um, and Stephen Hackett where they they ranted about photos for like eighty bajillion years. Yeah, and then and then. Um... ATP did it for like four episodes too. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. I, I don't want to turn this into one of those things. I kind of already have, I guess, for the past 30 seconds, but um, I'm definitely going to be buying into Apple's uh, photo solution after I get all my vacation stuff downloaded, which it looks like we are at real time follow up. It looks like we're at, uh, I don't know, 35% <laughs> of my vacation photos on my other computer here. So are you still using yeah. iPhoto? I, I'm on I'm on photos, but yeah, still the still the Mac photo solution. Not 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 like the actual iPhoto dot app app is not open, but it's I'm on photos. Okay, because I, I as soon as what was it, Mac OS ten point ten point three and eight point three yeah. came out when I when photos was publicly released and not beta, I instantly yeah. imported everything into that, and then I bought uh, two hundred gigabytes of iCloud. Four dollars a month. I figured it's not too bad, and so then I have totally. all my photos in the cloud, and that's actually the most handy thing is it syncs. Um, it's you know like Photo Stream, where yeah. it would sync photos that you recently take to its own separate thing, and now can sort it instantly into your library, and so it's oh it's gosh. like extra step, and so I would like it. I can you know add it into an album or something on my MacBook or desktop, yeah. and then it will be all the way up to date in that album on my phone and iPad. And that's really nice. I, I, I like that. It, it, it's better than using iTunes to add photos, which totally the time. And then photo stream is just a giant list rather than somewhat organized. And so totally. Yeah. That's awesome. Good to hear. That's, that's exactly what I was thinking about doing. Look at that, Brian, you're just doing all the things that I want to do like months before I do them. That's awesome. Super cool. I am Mr. Apple, man. You are <laughs> pretty you much are indeed. I, I've I have been uh, I have been out appled, and it's awesome. <laughs> Sweet. Um, so I guess I guess I have I have a thing that's next. Um, to get more into the developer-y side of things, even more than we already have been. Uh, I was at Drupal Camp earlier this uh, earlier this week because I uh, for, for my j- day job, jobby job, jobby McJobbertons, whatever you want to call it. I. Um, I do lots of CMS stuff. And uh, there were a couple of cool talks about it where I, I kind of pestered uh, Brian and Ryan, mostly mostly Ryan. And by pestered, like, you mean have enlightened. You, have you seen this? Have you seen this awesome thing that's going on here? So um, I've, I've got a couple couple things in that vein that we can talk about. Uh, so one of the talks was on the future of the CMS. And uh, as I started tweeting about this, I uh, I kind of brought Ryan in because uh, one of the things that they talked about was using um, JavaScript for the front end, or really just separating the back end and front end of Drupal so that Drupal basically just acts as a database and then uh, everything else on the client side uh, gets rendered either with some sort of Angular Ember sort of thing or with Node. Um, and there's actually, Ryan tweeted just like a couple minutes later, that um that twit um a podcast network that you probably have heard of if you're listening to the show and if you're not we can put a link in they just um they just redid their website to do this very thing turns out that the person who was giving that talk on the future of the cms um actually was one of the people who helped make twit's site possible which is like totally mind-blowing to me and i sent a bunch of links back to ryan which were Sort of helpful, and then uh, just just a minutes before the show here, if you listen to the fringe, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, you'll hear about how we discovered some of the some of the tools they have uh, to to make this happen. And the first one here is called Saucier. Um, my pronunciation is horrible, but I think that's a thing. Uh, and what Saucier does is it, it kind of helps you uh, integrate with Drupal to do uh, to use Node as the front end for Drupal, basically. So it's got some stuff in, kind of like a Twitter client would, where you just put in your your secrets, right? Your yeah. your private keys and all that. Um, and make sure all your environment variables are where you want them. And then you just, you know, do a bunch of uh, 
Ruby gem installs, um, install a bunch of node stuff, get the gulp task set up, uh, and then you are mm -hmm. in good shape to, to start working, which is pretty, pretty darn cool. And their commit messages here, as we talked about in the fringe, are just absolutely delightful. So if, if you're interested at all in learning how, uh, how, how to use node, uh, as a front end for, for Drupal, there's lots of, uh, lots of stuff out there on it, even more than we thought, than we thought there was 10 minutes before we started this. So yeah, it's, it's some cool, cool stuff. So what do you think about separating the front end from the back end? I have to say that like the, the consensus at, at Drupal camp was definitely that it's the future, right? So what the way that Drupal front end stuff was usually handled was uh, in, in template files, right? So it basically be a PHP template that you would then, that Drupal would then render for you. Yep. And that's all well, that's all well and good. Um, but with Drupal seven, the move was more towards getting as much of the, the, uh, the way that things look, the theming and the templating out of Drupal uh, itself and into the CSS and to the JavaScript, which is cool. But it has it has some kind of tricks with it, right? So now now we're kind of at a state where basically you're using the stock template files or stock template files given to you by the person who who set up your uh, who set up your Drupal instance, um, and then from there you do all the theming and all of the reorganization of things based in uh, based on your CSS essentially, or in some cases JavaScript too. But mostly it's it's all client side stuff, which is great. But the next step seems to be that like you just don't have Drupal doing any of the templating. All the templating is done on the client side, or if not on the client side, it's some intermediary step on your server. Yeah, which I think that's is... a key point. Definitely, that's a key point. I can't believe I misstepped that there. Well, but, you know, um, you got to get your SEO somewhere. That's true. That's <laughs> yeah, true. Well, like, that sounds like my Angular site. A little exactly. bit. Exactly. It's just it's just an Angular site that you're phoning home to uh, to the database. For. <laughs> so I'll just I'll just swap my MongoDB out with Drupal and it'll all be good, right? Yeah, pretty much. Exactly, exactly. Drupal's like MongoDB, except way, way, way heavier and more sturdy in some in some people's estimation. But well, I mean, it does a lot more too. That's you, yeah. I uh, so I think uh, so. A few weeks ago, I think is when the Twit website launched its uh -huh. new new version, and yeah, you know, I read about it. Uh, Twit's old website, also in Drupal, was awful. Like, whoever uh -huh. made their old website had no idea what they were doing. Any, like, average WordPress developer could have done the same thing with WordPress in, like, a weekend. It was uh -huh. just not a good website. The new website is really pretty, and it is really fast, and it, you know, it has all this API backing stuff, and it's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't, I, I just don't trust Node. Like, you could do everything that's doing, you could, but you could just do it with PHP. So you could have Drupal on the back end, and you could have another thing. It might not be Drupal. It could be just regular PHP. It could be a Laravel instance. It could be a Lumen instance. It could be uh -huh. a Silex. It could be anything. And that could be powering the front end, calling yeah. you know Drupal you know API queries in the back. Totally. I, I, so I'm, I'm not sold on the node, but I love the idea of separating the two. Yeah, the, if I can jump in here too, like there are people doing it with Laravel. I don't remember who they are because... I'm a terrible friend and I didn't look it up. That's fine. But uh but the, there were people who were like, you know, this this node stuff is is too too new agey for me. So <laughs> they uh they it's a thing. There are so many people who were talking about doing Laravel and in fact I wish I would have I wish I would have high fived them and uh said you have to meet my friend Ryan cuz <laughs> cuz no, I know all about seriously. Laravel, right? Yeah, no. Just really. yeah. uh business cards for Ryan. No, totally. Uh, I That's... I actually have two boxes of 500 if you want them. Nice. <laughs> 1000 business cards. Yeah, so there was a uh there was a deal Vistaprint? from Vistaprint on yep. Para Pandora like 5 years ago and I Oh, totally. And it was $10 in free shipping. It's like fine, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, wow, you might as well. Awesome. You know, it's when I was in high school and of course, oh, right, there's a blogger and a developer and it's like, yeah, right, cuz I blog now, huh? Sure. Yeah. I mean, blogger you you're a blogger if you do it, I don't know, 3 times a year. Okay, well, I might qualify then. <laughs> Because then I think I qualify technically. Okay, then. Yeah. Well, I vaguely qualify. I think I did one in January and I did one in May. Uh, yeah, totally. I've got like six posts in queue right now, and I don't think any of them are going to make it out before. Uh, certainly not before the end of the day tonight, but um, probably not by by September. If... <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Today or September, which which comes second? <laughs> yeah, it's it's like well, I, I either write it and finish it in one day, or it never gets done. 
is the is, is the way that it's been for me so far. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, but it, it was it was really cool. I wish I could have actually been uh, like present at that talk, but I was able I, able to kind of watch the Twitter sphere, and it seems like there's tons upon tons of buzz. And I mean, heck, even the day before yesterday, when I was when I was at Drupal Camp, there was so there were so many people who were buzzing about this, even um, even like before it happened. Did you hear about Midwest PHP at all? It was like maybe a couple months ago, maybe in May. I I heard about it happening. Yeah. It, was that here or was that So in that Chicago? was at I think that was at St. Thomas. It was at one of the local universities here. Oh my gosh, this is at St. Thomas too. Yeah. Oh, well, hey, look, PHP collides. That's and right. That's pretty funny actually. And so I heard about it the day of and of course, all of the slots were sold out. And even if it uh, wasn't sold out, it was still three hundred dollars to go. But man, yeah. that was that would have been so cool to go because all of the you know hipster PHP people, you know, doing all of the yeah. cool new world PHP, they were all there. All my my favorite heroes. Totally. Yeah. Next year, Your favorite hero, Ryan. Um, I have no idea what their names are. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what are their Twitter handles? Um, uh, Sammy K. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, Phil Sturgeon. I don't think he was there, but I'm sure he would have been there in spirit otherwise. And uh, I, I also still don't know their Twitter handles, but a bunch of the system internals through the PHP engine itself, they were also there. Um, hmm. They also did their live podcast there, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. And they, you know, they took questions from the audience. So <laughs> I wouldn't so probably cool. have asked any questions, but it would have still been cool to have been there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you think you'd do it next year? If they have it again, I'd definitely do it. Because now I know that it exists. I know, right? Yeah, that's yeah. half the battle. See that—that that was the trick for me too. With like uh, SourceCon, I that, it's a that's a Knights and Mozilla project for uh, open journalism and mm-hmm. awesomeness. I, I'm pretty sure that's their legal title. Um, they they were over at McNamara over on campus, and oh. I, I literally work right across the street from yeah, McNamara. You do. a couple a couple different ways. So I I oh my gosh, I was like crying because there were so many people from like Vox and of course Mozilla oh. and Vo- really Vox. Yeah, Vox was oh, all over man. the place. They're like, they're uh, CMS now. That's the future. Yeah, they're they're. Uh, I can tell you their business cool. model isn't. Ha 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 ha. You did there. The the product people, yeah, it was it was a bunch of product people there, um, and oh my gosh, they all not only are they all so cool, they're all people I follow. On, well, I don't follow all of them on Twitter. I follow a lot of them on Twitter, and the yeah. ones that I follow on Twitter are super cool. Yeah, I follow uh, a bunch of Vox people on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, and it's good. Like, and like uh, U.S. Digital Service people were there. Oh yeah, and they yeah, were like, they're they're pretty cool too. Oh my gosh, I would have like given anything to go there. But not only was I was I at work for part of the time, and not only was it sold out or at least closed by the time I, I found out about it. But I was also at Drupal, com- uh, Drupal camp the second day. So Oops. I was like, <sighs> yeah, all of, all of the fails and it's never going to be in Minneapolis again with my luck. But. Of course. Yeah, I know. That's one I kind of fear about Midwest BHP. They could move it. That'd be terrible. It's, it's gotta be West. So, I mean, like the farthest you'd go is probably Chicago, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or, Michigan. or it could Michigan. go the other way. <laughs> North um, Dakota, Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah. North just, just in North Dakota, the small town, North Dakota, somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I think they're going to get a lot of attendance that year. <laughs> totally. Well, hmm, let me see. Oh, Midwest PHP is Minnesota's PHP developer conference. So oh, they're okay. Gonna stick, well, that's good. I think they're going to stick in uh, in uh, St. Thomas good. if they can get that venue again, which I'm sure they can. Well, like St. Paul one year, Minneapolis the next, I don't know, yeah. the year after, ooh, mixing it up. Ooh. Well, you know, St. Thomas does have two campuses, and I think they're both available. I didn't for know that till today, actually, when I was down in Minneapolis and I saw uh-huh. a guy with it at St. Thomas. Totally, I you know I didn't put two and two together because I've seen them in such different contexts. So I'm like, oh, that's St. Thomas, and then when I'm in St. Paul, oh, that's St. Thomas. Yeah, and it's just like wh- whichever one I'm at, that is the St. Thomas. <laughs> but no, it's it's cool. It was cool, and it's a good venue for that sort of thing too. Definitely. I mean, college campuses always are because you have lots of rooms to put people in. And that's really necessary when you're showing code. Totally. Totally. So in addition to the uh, the front end, back end separation stuff, um, there was also a really interesting talk about how to handle 
uh, kind of the non PHP, non content E resources of, uh, of, of a Drupal install. So the CSS, the JavaScript, and, uh, in, in some cases like the, like the header images and stuff. Right. Yep. Um, and this, these, this team of, of, uh, presenters from, uh, uh, consultancy over in, in San Francisco called chapter three had this really interesting um, talk that was essentially just w- what they do, um, which was, which was, you know, it's, it's always kind of cool to hear about that. Even if, even if they make some decisions that you probably would not make. Right. Um, and they, they don't have the slides up for that particular talk, but they have a, an essentially identical uh, one for a talk they did in, I think Arizona called Grunton Gulpin or none of the above. Uh, as you can see, it's about uh, everything from, uh, task runners to um, like CSS frameworks and stuff. That's um, something that would interest me. Yeah, I thought you would absolutely love it, Brian. I, I think the guy's going to put the rest of the slides up eventually, but I think his co-presenter was recently um, out of commission due to uh, some some health problems. So he's uh, s- sounded like he was resting back at the hotel as of yesterday afternoon. So, um, but the the talk is really cool. They run through a lot of different things. Basically, um, they throw a lot of uh, throw a lot of uh, stuff around for uh, with regards to grunt versus gulp. They are totally in the gulp camp, which is kind of interesting because they're um, right. They're I th- I think they're right too. <laughs> and they oh man, they were hating on Bootstrap left and right. It, uh, was, it, it was awesome. It deserves the hate. It was it was really funny. They're like Bootstrap is good for prototyping. I would agree. <laughs> that was it. No, it. I, I totally agree too. But it, it's just like really funny. But because um, can I just can I just say when when we met up in in March for spring break? Yeah, yeah. You're talking about task runners and grunt, and I'm like, yeah. Have you heard of gulp? And I think both of you were like, no. <laughs> See, gulp change. Both in the bandwagon. You know, things totally. change so fast here. Totally. I mean, like gulp is cool. I, I think gulp is the one that came out of uh, like Boku, right? That they're over in. Uh, I have no idea where it came Coast. from. It just it just popped into my life. <laughs> it just appeared. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Let's let's see if I can find it. I'm like ninety percent sure this is a Boku project. And Boku okay, well, is the really real cool. reason I'm in the gulp camp now is because Laravel ships with it by default. So I guess that helps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. No, totally, totally. I'm I'm like ninety percent sure. Oh, maybe it's not from Bokoop. I thought it was. Well, that's that. Doesn't really matter because it's cool anyway. Basically, they said that uh, Gulp was the best because it lets you write code instead of writing JSON. Which, I mean, I that's, like their, that's a benefit. Their they say, yeah, Pro is fast. New bullet point, like real fast. Yeah, totally, totally. I the the presenters there are just such such fun people. <laughs> it was awesome. I got I, like uh, I was over in uh, in San Francisco a while back for uh, for uh, Signal yep. and uh, well we talked about that but even even then it's really like Drupal presenters are really cool presenters have to say just putting that out there I I can't imagine what the PHP people will be like that would be hilarious I'm sure that'd be awesome. What are all these YouTube videos you put in the in the so, show notes here? So um, you're uh, you're talking about Sussy next. Is that what you call it, Sussy or Susie? Su- Sussy. I, I I think it's Susie. But okay, um, well, to me it's yeah. Sussy, but I don't know. I don't watch TV. That's fine. But hey, um, Sass bites. Yeah. Nice. So like eight months ago, maybe maybe is it eight months ago? Uh-huh. Whenever that first episode came out, I was just sitting on the local YouTube and like, oh hey, uh, I think I'll watch this interesting presentation about some. CSS framework I've never heard before. And ever yeah. since then, I've loved the sussy slash Suzy CSS framework. I've never used it, but I love the idea of it. Totally. And so I decided to put all those links in there because there are a lot of good uh, videos about, you know, how it works and how the guy uh, yeah. figured out how to make it and, you know, do it all. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like the, just the way that you can do all this like source reordering yep to with within the grid so when when the grid collapses down at, at lower uh screen sizes everything everything you can you can change almost everything about it just with classes which is well what, uh, what i like about suzy slash sussy better sussy, than yeah. um better than like maybe even foundation is that it yeah. has a simpler like i only really care about the grids from foundation like that if i if i didn't t- need other things i would only need the grids yeah, and I, I like that it's this whole system is just focused on providing those grids, and that's it. Totally, I it, love no that too. Like that's the best thing. Grids. Let's say that again. Literally just grids. Yep, just grids. That's oh, cool. 
Nice. And so, I, nice. and I really like that part of it. Now, it is it is SAS based, so you still have to have the compiler and thing. Yeah. But that's part of the point because it does all of the calculations for you, and that's kind of nice. Mm-hmm. Cool. So totally. it's more customized for your project. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And mm-hmm. so you can bring your own, um, you know, your own fonts and your own, yeah. um, you know, button styles if you need buttons and stuff. Like, Alerts. So, oh gosh, you know, it's funny to bring it full circle when I, when I, so I'm working on the back end of the Nexus CMS right now in Laravel, uh-huh. but you guys, of course, made me start thinking of making another Laravel project for the front end. And, totally. And if I do that, I could not use foundation for the front end because there's really no buttons in the front end. There's really no special navigation stuff in the front end. It could be much lighter and I could just use Suzy as, you know, the, the grids. Do just it. Grids and no other styling. Oh, that just, would be just amazing. Grids, just a white page. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, you know, I'll and think about it. Wonderful serif fonts. So, well, I can make sans serif and serif. <laughs> totally. No, that'd be awesome. You should do it. And you should definitely talk about that on future episodes. Oh, if, definitely. If you go that route. Yeah, we'll see. Awesome. It, it might be a lot of work. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, see, I don't know anything about writing an API either. Uh, Phil Sturgeon has a good book about writing APIs you don't hate, but I've I never was just read gonna it. Say, yep. Yep, that, I haven't read it either, but I've read reviews but, of it. But everybody loves it, and everybody says I should read it, and so maybe I should read it and then do it. Totally. One last thing from Drupal Camp, uh, and then and then we can move on, and that is uh, docs generators. So in that same talk, they they basically say use all of the doc generators, especially they there was one called SAS doc that they just talked up like nothing else. It was awesome. Um, SAS doc is another thing, kind of like Suzy, where if where you can be amazed what happens if you just like understand where it fits into your project and use it there right kind of the convention yep. over configuration thing um which is which is kind of cool because i'm getting into that with with ruby and with some kind of ember stuff i've been messing around with but that's like the ember stuff is not even like remotely ready for prime time i literally am just essentially messing around with the default projects but um like for docs generators we, we kind of talked about this on twitter ryan but yep. um like I've been kind of seeing how that would work with Ruby or how that would work with JavaScript, especially with Ruby as I'm starting to um, get ready to to make this project for work that I'm doing. Um, like, how, how do I, as a, a one-person developer team that is one person, um, write a bunch of code that doesn't suck and makes other people happy? And I guess the two answers to that are unit testing and lots of comments. Yeah, and I'm not even... like. With Laravel and the stuff I've been writing lately, I haven't even tested it at all, and I actually still mm-hmm. have no idea how. And I'm okay with it. Yeah, it's it's all it's all about picking what's right for your project and yeah. for your project, what's right is however you want to do it. It it it, it, it it's uh, I just have to test it all by hand every time. <laughs> just, gotcha. just visually knowing if it works, and you're fine. That's good enough for me. Yeah, Couple pretty much. Console logs and you're good to go. Yeah. Well, it's on the server, so I don't know if the console logs are going to work out. <laughs> this, this Print off, yeah. Yep. Nice. Well, I think we got one more thing up, but I think this is this is something that you'd wanted to talk about, eh, Ryan? Yeah, so uh so you you guys use NPM, right? You bet all day every day. Yeah, all the time. Well, I mean everybody kinda needs to use it. I mean you kinda need it for gulp, you kinda need it for babble, you kinda need it for a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a problem with NPM, and the problem is if you run Windows, which you know, unfortunately some people have to run Mm-hmm. You don't really get to use it as well as you could because Windows has this disgusting 260 character limit for path names. Uh, yeah. And so that basically means NPM is broken on Windows. Well, <laughs> it goes, it gets worse than that. So I, uh, develop stuff in Vagrant. Mm-hmm. And so I have a Vagrant install on my Mac and a Vagrant install on the Windows and both are tied into the same Git repo. So whenever I push to one, I can pull it on the other and, you know, they're mo- both relatively in sync. Mm-hmm. Well, unfortunately right now, because I'm using NPM to compile my Babel and my yeah. uh, ES6 code, I don't get to use it on Windows because Vagrant syncs back from the, the, the internal VM, you know, of some Ubuntu distro back to Windows. And then as soon as it hits Windows, the paths break completely oh, every yeah. single time. And so uh, this change in NPM 3 will fix that. It, they're going to move to flat dependencies instead of nested dependencies. Oh. And, uh, and that's going to probably help. Nice. So this would mean that anytime that your a package requires a dependency, instead of making it a dependency of the dependency, 
yep. it will, of your project. It'll just make it a dependency of your project, and then it'll link everything that way. Yeah, so it'll it'll do all the linking internally, unless it detects that there will be a conflict between one project like or one, one yeah one one version um uh, one subversion one other subversion thing. So then they will be nested in that case, nice. and hopefully it won't. Hopefully there aren't so many conflicts that the problem persists. But I yeah. think it's a pretty decent solution for now. Yeah, that's awesome. And so it's... I have no idea when it's coming out, but I hope it's soon. It needs to happen immediately. Totally. Well, does that? It seems like one of the effects of that might be that you can require dependencies of other modules in your project just straight yeah. away. Yeah, I think you'll be able to because you'll know where the paths are. Ah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's pretty great. We'll see, you know, like I said, how long it takes to actually get into production because they say, well, you know, we're not ready to push it yet, so we'll wait a while, so stay tuned. Yeah, so this is this is like as of yesterday? No, a couple uh, days is, ago? Yeah, a few days ago. But they pushed it to... Yeah. Yeah, the NPM people seem to be doing some cool stuff like that. That's that's awesome. So I... I, I, I see, I don't know a lot about NPM, and I don't know... Um, like what the development cycle is or, you know, yeah. um, you know, stuff. But I'm I'm really glad they're fixing this problem now. Apparently, NPM could have been doing this support for long Windows Pass prior to this, but apparently uh-huh. they, they needed to wait on Node for, like, API support for Windows or something. I don't know. Oh, gosh. Yeah. That makes sense, I guess. Yeah. Eek. What's that about? But it looks like it is in their pre-release on their pre-release channel. If you can get on their pre-release channel for NPM, See, I, I don't, how do you do these um, fancy things? I, might you be able to do it with with like N, which is like TJ Holloway Chuck's um, like Node version manager? I don't know. I could be wrong about that. I don't know. I'll you find probably out do it with NPM. I'll, uh, maybe maybe offline. I will I will do some investigation yeah. and send some stuff out. Because if, yeah. if I could switch over to that you know, NPM three branch and try it. I guess I would totally do it. I mean, it's not like it can develop on windows anyway. So if it breaks, Oh, well, no loss. Yeah. It'll gotcha. only improve. All right. That's, yeah. the, that's the way to go. That's mm-hmm. the way to do it. Well, so, um, you guys want an update on my iPhone? Oh, sure. Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, it's now jailbroken. However, this jailbreak has had issues with, um, so I always has a, UI cache for home uh-huh. screen icons and things that show up in Spotlight and whatnot. However, there was an issue with this version where it's kind of hacked together. Um, thought it was fixed. Apparently not. So right now, this is my home screen. There is no app on it, no pages. <laughs> so um, it's totally usable, right? I cannot. I can type something in Spotlight and it doesn't do anything. Ooh. Oh, gosh. I tap, a, I tap a link when it searches it that should open in Safari. It does not. And I go to Notification Center. There are Notification Center widgets. However, can't open them in an app. So I think I have to restore, try again, see what I did wrong, if anything, and maybe just wait. So, great. Oh, gosh. This is what happens. You just, you know, make a backup and you realize it's your, yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah. I, you know, I've always yeah. wanted to root one of my Android phones, but I just don't. I just haven't. It's yeah. so cool. Uh, I did that, too. I did that around the same time that I did my... Uh, um, that, that that I did the iPod Touch. I rooted my Droid Incredible from back in the day. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It, it was it was incredible or something. The the HTC Incredible as it was known in non Verizon markets. Oh yeah, Verizon and their Droid line. What's that? <laughs> I remember when they had. I th- they have to get all the mileage they can out of that because they had to sue. Uh, basically, sue uh, the Lucasfilm yep. for for rights to it, mm-hmm. right? Because they they weren't they weren't about that life. Yeah, I don't know. That was that was always a silly thing. Totally, absolutely. But I mean, Verizon. Anywho, I think that about wraps it up with this week, based on based on the the show notes and yeah. based on the words that we've been saying. I think so. so. What are you, What are you guys doing next week? Anything fun? I'm Fourth of July. I'm hanging out with family. That's good. Fourth of July uh-huh. is a good time to do that. I'm going to start sketching out a couple of ideas for things that I want to do by the end of the summer, program wise and otherwise. Um, and I'm hopefully going to get started on like active development of of that uh, that app I'm working on for work. The and, the, the, uh, the Rails one. 
the Rails one. Yeah, oh, I've, I've got to, I've got actually a couple of API mockups for uh, for the the stuff that I'm gonna have to consume, so I can actually start doing this TDD style test driven development from day one, which I'm really excited about, and a business analyst is I think really excited about. So are you gonna so, have to build like any kind of rate limiting or anything into that? You betcha. Oh man, I can't even imagine how to do that. It's gonna be a party. But um, yes, yeah, some some of the people on our um, on the t- one of our main customers for this app, is, they're basically like, oh well, we totally need a REST API for this yeah. because we want we want to make all of our requests programmatically instead of having to go through the UI. And I'm of like, course. but what if I make the UI really pretty? <laughs> yeah, well, that's that what everybody always they're says. Like, they're like, no, no, yeah, <laughs> so, of course. Yeah. At first, they wanted a, uh, a command line interface, and, and we were like, ah, uh, that sounds like a future enhancement. Because, <laughs> <laughs> but because it's Ruby, we can just uh, we, we can just do it all. Uh, you know, uh, a cool all, all thing about Laravel is. is you get a command line interface right out of the box. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, you, you get it right through Artisan, and so you can do anything. So you can trigger a controller, you can trigger a request, you can re- trigger a you know, model insert, you can trigger anything. Yeah, that's awesome. It's great. Oh, that's so cool. But that that's kind of what I'm up to. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Oh my gosh, I'm super excited. The the people who who are our main customers for this are gonna uh, hopefully are gonna love what we what we end up with. Because even if even if all we get when when stuff gets to be released is a is a REST API, that's like eighty percent of the way there. Because then you're just curling. Yeah. Until exactly. until the cows come home. Yeah. And that's that's basically a command line interface, especially for these guys. Because exactly. Yeah. You can make your own JavaScript command line front end. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. In Angular. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll probably be doing uh, Fourth of July stuff too. Um, you know, and, and playing with the the new phone that's coming. Even though it's not my phone, I'll still play with it, of course. Nice. Um, yeah, it'll be cool to hear about that, especially with it being like the first and only Intel. Well, it's not the X86 only phone. Intel, but it's one of few Intels. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so it'll it's, be pretty the, cool. It might be the first Intel phone in this uh, in, in this state in this uh, census metropolitan area. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll be doing that. Nice. Yeah, and of course, working on this code that I have no idea what I'm doing. Hey, well, that's 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 how all great programs start, eh? You know, last week I told you about how I was working on the MP3 thing. Finish that. Yeah. It can you can give it an MP3 URL and it'll go find out. How long it is, and how you know what whatever you need to know, how many bytes it is, and uh, what what's cool about it is it doesn't have to download the whole file. It only has to download one meg of the file to get yeah. enough of the uh, ID three frames, and then it will figure out from there how long the file is. So that's pretty cool. And now I guess the next thing I have to figure out how to do is how to handle album art. Uh huh. So I have to figure out how to dynamically resize album art upon a file upload. Oh gosh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh, that's is, gonna be great. Is that image magic? Um, so uh, I have no idea what it uses at the back end, but there's a great composer package called Image Intervention. Oh yeah, and uh, I guess it will use uh, Image Magic, but also GD if it needs to to do it. Nice. Yeah. Oh. I used image Magic once. It was to to smush two photo to or. Two images next to each other and make one large one that was just them next to each other. For some, like I think I thought, I'm like you know, command line would be so much faster and easier than some GUI. Yeah, and I think it was, but yeah, that's the only it's the only time I've used image magic. Yeah, I so used we'll it for a bunch of goes. knowledge base. Yeah, that should be awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Im- image magic is the FFmpeg of uh, yeah, exactly of image libraries and okay. vice versa. Yeah, definitely. It's it's a party, no matter how you slice it. But yeah. As far as command line image image processing libraries, yeah, no, that'll be cool. That'll mm-hmm. be cool. Good to see what you uh, what you come up with from that. Definitely. So, uh, where can we find you on the internet? Uh, well, I am on the Twitter sphere at Brandon underscore M N with an A and O and an M and N, and uh, I am also on the interwebs at b r n d n dot x y z, which is my main web homepage where I'm going to be hopefully updating some stuff in the near future. But possibly not tonight. Maybe before September. <laughs> we'll figure that out later. Um, that's about that's about it for me. How about you, Brian? You know, I'm gonna mix it up. I'm gonna say you can find me at brianm.me slash contact. Oh nice. everything. Not not that it's a new page. I I made that months and months ago, but is it did you make it with Angular? 
I mean, it, it uses Angular because that whole site is routed with Angular, but there's <laughs> nothing Angular fancy on there. There's Font Awesome. Yeah, oh, that's pretty awesome. Font awesome is bay. <laughs> but otherwise, uh, Twitter at Tech4789 or at Dman 4789 And of course, you can find me, Ryan Rampersad, just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Meyer. And of course, on Google+, Plus, where I infrequently and indirectly make a post about going to a movie theater to see something about dinosaurs. Nice. Yeah. Jurassic. World. Uh, and you can also find the show notes for this episode of Podkit, which happens to be episode 5, at the nexus.tv slash pk5. Mm-hmm. Just, just, awesome. so, just so if you got through the whole show, but then for some reason wanted to listen to the show again, but with show notes, you could do that. Or just you listen to it once, and you look up everything to recap, and make sure we're talking about what we say we are <laughs> you know we could have just made all this up you could be listening to episode 6 right now oh man now now, oh, I, now I just had made everybody check the URL to see if they got it right you should, yes. just, you should just make every URL one ahead of what episode it is um, that would be awesome that would be terrible and I don't think my CMS supports it but I can code it <laughs> <laughs> oh that would be so cool if PK subtract episode number by one <laughs> perfect yeah Well, thanks for uh, being on, and uh, have a good week. Yep, see you on the flip side. Yeah, that's that's right, because you don't have to divide it by two. Yeah. Nice. I'll put a link to the uh, Tau Day Manifesto. Because everybody should have Tau Day. Totally. Well, is there so? Of course, with Pi Day, you have uh, the the convenience of the of the homophone giving you a bunch of uh, delicious snacks, right? Right. But like, you can't really eat a Tau, can you? No, I but mean... you can eat two pies. Oh. Yeah. And the slides, you know, they just have words on it, but they don't really tell you a whole lot. I guess I don't know. Oh, I'm too yeah, I'm did... too technical for my own good. See, I need to know how to actually do it. I get you. Yeah. No, I, I didn't. To be honest, I didn't look at them either. I was just like, "Hey, look, a resource." <laughs> I, I, you know, it's pretty funny though that that happened to be their case study. Yeah, totally. Yeah, just like minutes before I was talking it about it. Is this the show? Uh, it could be the show. Is this the show? I think I think this might be the show. It might be the show, but I think we should start the show. The show is it uh, started already? No, it's not started already. But should we start then? Let's do it. Okay, I'm going to put a marker in. You and your puns. <laughs> hey, but no puns at work. Yeah. Hey, get back to dot work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Adept so work. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to put that uh, that link finding expedition in the parking lot. Oh, you're going to put it in the parking lot? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, or... might have, you might have to join Casey while you're out there. Improving. I'm, you know, I've I've, I've gone to my meetings and, uh, yeah, I, I feel like I'm. You're uh, feeling in, it. In better shape. I'm feeling it. That's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, catchphrase recovery. I'm living it. Oh well, there we go. Fringe title. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, hold on. <laughs>